What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Another month has gone by. I cannot believe it. I know I say that every single month. It is now time for my monthly favorites. These are going to be all of the products that I've been loving in the month of September. So if you guys want to see a little bit more of what I've been enjoying over the past couple of weeks, then keep watching. And if this is your first time here, then welcome, welcome. My name is Sophia, and this is my channel where we talk about all things beauty and luxury. Every single week, I upload new videos on all of the new makeup that's out on the market. In addition to comparison videos, roundup videos, favorites videos like this, and also luxury fashion hauls. So if you love makeup and luxury, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button to join the fam because we have so, so much fun over here on this channel. And you can also hit the notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video. I know you all love favorites videos. Otherwise, why would you be watching this video? So if you like this video, please don't forget to give your girl here a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And as usual, I will link everything that I mentioned in this video, anything that I'm wearing, anything on my face in the description box down below. Depending on the brand, those links do tend to be affiliate links. So if you like my video, Videos, if you find them helpful and you want to support my channel, shopping through those links is a really great way to do so at no additional cost to you. Speaking of what is on my face, because I know a bunch of you are going to ask, I'm actually wearing the new Pat McGrath Holiday Palette. This is the look that I did with... Whoop, there we go. This is the look that I did with this section right here. I am filming my review of this palette today. That video should actually already be live on my channel, so definitely check that out. Eee, I have a whole box full of goodies for you all here. And luckily, I do have fully dedicated videos for a lot of these products, so I'll kind of call those out as we go in case you guys want more in-depth reviews, swatches, etc. This is more of like a fun show-and-tell kind of video. And I want to start off my favorites with primers. If you guys missed it, I had a whole video, kind of like a roundup up comparison video of all the new glowy products on the market. Most of them are kind of marketed as like primers, liquid highlighters, and I break all of it down, let you guys know the differences and similarities between them, things that are affordable dupes. So if you guys are looking for a little bit more glow and you want to see a roundup and comparison, kind of like a buying guide of sorts, definitely check out that video. The two products from that video that I have been wearing lately that I've really been enjoying have been number one, this one from Natasha Denona. So this is the Natasha Denona high gen skin glass and i mentioned in that video this is very much like a priming serum moisturizer i don't know how necessary it is if you do a lot of skin prep i kind of feel like this is more of skincare but the weather this month has gotten a little colder and drier i swear in the beginning of the month it was legit like 80 90 degrees and within two weeks it was in the 60s like it is cool. I'm wearing a sweater right now. What I've been doing with this is because I haven't really switched over to my really duty like creme de la mer moisturizers and that kind of stuff. I'm still sort of using my summer routine. And then I've kind of just been going in with this as like a little extra boost of hydration. This does have a very shimmery kind of texture, but it's fairly subtle. I think it makes a really good primer. That's what it's designed for. I think this is good if number one, I just want a little more hydration. Number two, if I'm going in with a matte foundation on top, you know, maybe like the Lancome Taint Idol or even like the Lisa Eldridge foundation. And then the third time that I like to use this is like if I do my skincare in the morning, but then I don't immediately go into my makeup. Maybe I wait a couple hours, maybe I had some meetings, but I feel like putting makeup on later on or I'm going somewhere after work, I'll kind of refresh my skincare with this so I can kind of prime up my face. Like my skin is still clean. I don't want to wash it again because my skin is very sensitive. I'll go in with this and it just adds like a nice moisturized base for my foundation. The other glowy product that I've been using lately is this one. This is the R Glow Less and I have the shade Selenite. I also have the shade Sunstone, but that one's a little bit darker, more of like a summertime kind of mixy shade for me. And the way that I like to use this, or just my favorite way right now, is to use it as like a blurring base. I do have fairly dark under eye circles. I'm just, I'm very pale and they're hereditary, so they're pretty prominent. And one of the biggest things that I wanna cover up when I'm doing my base is my dark circles. The second thing is just kind of like the redness and discoloration that I have here on the tops of my cheeks. So I'll go in with this on just a teeny little brush. I'll paint it onto the darkest parts of my under eyes. I kind of dab it on on top of that rosacea that I have right here, a little hyperpigmentation, and it instantly blurs everything up so that when I go in with my concealer, it's just so much brighter. I can really tell when I film and I 
see myself on camera. I mean, I'm like editing these videos every single day and I can definitely tell the difference when I go in with this first versus when I don't. For my foundation favorite this month, this is actually something that I really used to enjoy. And then you guys know how it goes. Like you buy new foundations, you put things aside and then you rediscover them again. This is the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation. I don't know if any of you are the same, but I got into this because Katie Jane Hughes was using it nonstop on her Instagram. And every single night I used to fall asleep to her doing those makeup tutorials. Just so relaxing. I used to kind of like put that on, watch her little tutorials, and it would just put me in like the best little sleepy mood. Anyway, what I really like about this is that it's very lightweight and refreshing on the skin, but it's still quite pigmented. It's still going to cover up all of your imperfections, but not kind of settle into your fine lines. It's also fairly hydrating, so that's good. If you're new here, I have pretty dry and dehydrated skin, so I do like to go in more so with hydrating formulas. And yeah, I pulled this out because I'm just trying to show some more love to some of my older foundations. Makeup does expire, and so there's a couple of ones that I do really enjoy, but I just need to kind of use up a little bit more. So I definitely rediscovered this. The only thing that I don't like about this is the scent. It has a very strong, perfumey scent. It's not stronger than, you know, a Dior or a Chanel foundation. I equally just don't really like the scents of any of those foundations, to be quite honest with you. They're too perfumey for me, but I'll put up with it. You know, once it goes on your face, it dissipates. I don't smell it anymore. It's just that experience of putting it on my face that I don't really enjoy from a perfumed standpoint. I don't think anybody's going to be surprised by this next one. My concealer favorite for the month of September is this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer. Man, I, I'm good. This is definitely going to be in best makeup of 2022 later on in the year when I do those roundup videos because I just can't stop using this. I did a full review of this if you guys are interested in kind of hearing my thoughts, seeing a wear test, application tips, all that kind of stuff. I just love this. This is so incredible brightening. This is probably the only concealer where I would say I could probably like forego the R Glow Lust because this almost has the R Glow Lust glowy power built inside of it. Not only is it brightening, but it doesn't settle into my fine lines. It covers up all my imperfections. It doesn't get dry and cakey. It's not too thick. It's not too matte. It really does exactly what it promises to do. I absolutely love it. It's very hydrating. The only caveat that I need to make to you all and some of you mentioned this in the comments of my review and I went to Sephora to investigate is that this does have mica particles in it and so depending on your skin tone depending on the shade that you get those mica particles are going to be more prominent and so a lot of you were telling me in the comments that this concealer has glitter in it that it was very glittery and I had no idea what you were talking about I didn't notice any glitter whatsoever and so I really needed to look into this so I went into my local Sephora the last time that I was there. I swatched a couple of the shades. I swatched this one, a medium toned one, and one of the deepest shades. And then I watched the concealer dry under the sort of Sephora LED, you know, like the fluorescent lights that they have in retail stores. And I must say, I will show you guys a clip right here because I did take some footage of this. I do notice a glittery effect. And what I have to say about this, just to kind of close the loop on my thoughts here, is that if you have a lighter shade, it is very much less noticeable. Also, if you are in natural light, I also think it is less noticeable. I really did not notice the glitteriness until I was in that kind of very unnatural fluorescent lighting within a store. Just me being, you know, I work from home. I'm kind of at home all day. I'm almost never under fluorescent lighting unless I'm like, in a mall or something like that. I don't really see it. I really don't notice it. And for that reason, that's probably why I didn't pick up on that. But I do just want to warn you all, if you have a deeper skin tone, you might just want to test this out. You know, buy it from Sephora. They have a very lenient return policy. If you notice it a lot and you don't like that, you can definitely return it. So yeah, I do notice that it is more evident with the deeper shades and under like more unnatural types of lighting. Moving on to like the bronzer, blush, highlighter types of categories. I don't think any of you will be surprised to see this in this video, but of course I had to include the Hourglass Tiger Palette. I reviewed all three of these palettes for you guys. If you didn't check out that video, if you're trying to decide what palette to get, I highly recommend you check that out. I do a lot of comparisons, sort of, you know, daylight applications and swatches, all that good stuff. If you didn't watch that video, sorry, here's a quick spoiler, but this is my favorite palette. 
<laughs> this is my favorite palette. This is actually the one that was designed for deeper skin tones. For the most part, I think a lot of people are really liking this palette and I know that I influenced a lot of you to pick it up as well and you all are really, really enjoying it. This is just such a beautiful palette. If you're not familiar with what comes in these palettes, first of all, this is the Hourglass Holiday Release. They came out with three different palettes and this one has essentially a finishing powder that is designed for deeper skin tones. I like to use it as a bronzer. We also have these two really beautiful, very pigmented, glowy blushes. And then this palette has three highlighters. I am actually on my cheeks today wearing this blush and this highlighter kind of like mixed together as a glowy highlight and I sort of buffed that onto my cheeks with a Sonia G smooth buffer brush. I think that this palette is so so beautiful. I know I've already spoken so much about it in that review so I won't repeat myself too much but I think that if you are pale as long as you use a light hand you can do magic with this palette. In my review I also put it on my eyes so you can see what it looks like as an eye look. I love warm tones and so this this is just like a match made in heaven. I almost wish that this was launched earlier in the year because going into fall, I probably won't reach for this quite as much. I sort of reach more for like nudes and berry tones and reds, richer colors, sometimes more cool tone colors. But that being said, I've been using this nonstop and I think that if you are deeper in tone, this is also going to be perfect for you. Another obvious favorite of mine, of course, are these Gucci blushes. Mm, I reviewed these towards the end of August and so I didn't really feel like it was it was fair for me to put this in my August favorites, so you know they gotta be in the September favorites. Man, I love these blushes. Did a full review of almost every shade. I finally got the shade that I didn't have, which was the Coral 104. But the two shades that I have for you here today that I've been enjoying are specifically the Warm Berry shade, and then of course, the rosy beige shade. I don't know why on some websites this is called rosy beige and then on others it's called rosy tan. This is number 05, you know, 05 and 06. Those are the shades that I've been really loving for fall. I told you guys in that review that these are my favorite shades. These are just kind of the tones that I gravitate towards, especially during this time of year. And I know that a lot of you picked up this shade and you absolutely love it. You really love it. I was so excited so many of you went and picked up this shade. I'm actually wearing rosy base sort of on the center of the cheeks today and then I went in with the hourglass highlighters and kind of buffed that in over top but what I like about these is not only do I love the gorgeous like Hollywood inspired packaging but also the formula is very blendable it's very silky and it's a touch glowy without being glittery it's a very beautiful sophisticated luxury formula these are very expensive I do get that but I think that these would make a really beautiful gift a really great way to treat yourself they're going to be in the Sephora sale so if you can get the 10 15 20 percent off I think that this is going to be a good pick these are definitely going to be in my Sephora sale recommendations video that's coming up later this month. I also wanted to mention like a bunch of people were saying, oh, they're so tiny, you don't get a lot of product. I looked it up and you get the same amount as you would with a NARS blush. So it's the same amount of product. It's very expensive. It's gonna be a little more expensive than a NARS blush, but you're getting the same amount of product that you would get from like a lot of other standard blushes. We're moving on to eyeshadow palettes and I actually have a couple to show here. So bear with me guys. I had a lot of eyeshadow favorites this month. The first one that I wanna show you is this one from Isamea Beauty. I did like a Q&A, get ready with me video. I know it was very long, so it's not really like a review video of this, but I did a get ready with me where I tested out most of the products from this industrial collection from Isamea Beauty. If you're not familiar with Isamea Friends, she's a really beautiful, awesome, super creative makeup artist. I really like her work. She recently came out with a beauty line and then this is her first collection. At least this is the palette from her first collection. This was so fun to play with. I really like the looks that I've created with this so far. For me, this is definitely a fall and winter palette. I probably won't reach for this in spring and summer because I have so many palettes and I, like, I'm like. i more likely to reach for the Hourglass Tiger palette during those months than I would for something like this. But that being said, I really like this. A lot of people have been asking me, you know, is this worth it? Should I get it? Should I get this over X? And I think you need to ask yourself if you already have these tones in your collection. Personally, I really like the formula. I think it's very luxurious. That being said, there's not a lot of mattes in this palette. So I think you have to be okay with the fact that like you might have to dip into other palettes if you want a soft brown transition shade, if you want like a dark chocolate brown, you're really only getting these two shades, which are just 
two different shades of black. So I'm just gonna put that out there. The main star of the show for this palette are definitely the shocking, beautiful, gorgeous shimmer shades. And some of them are more pigmented than others because some of them are supposed to be more so showing off like the finish and more of a topper shade than something that has a really pigmented base. So, so I love that there's so many different pigments to play with here. I definitely feel really artistic. I think somebody said this in one of my comments and I have to agree. This kind of makes me feel like how the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes, the first couple that she came out with, made me feel when they were first released. Like I hadn't used anything like that before. The colors and the finishes were a lot more unique. And this just kind of takes me back to that feeling where I can be a little bit more artistic and it's something that maybe puts me a little bit more out of my comfort zone. A very different palette, but one that I've been loving equally is this one. This is from the Natasha Denona My Dream Collection. This is, you know, obviously the palette from this collection. I also have a full review of this up on my channel. This has been my go-to neutral palette for the month of September. I did a lot of looks with this before filming my review, just kind of playing around with all of the shadows. And this really is just kind of my perfect neutral palette. I love the fact that the shimmers in here are pretty high shine. I love a lot of sparkle. I have I appreciate subtlety, but I do like to have some sparkle to the lid, even if it's just like one topper shade. I also really love the fact that she's got a couple of duochromes in here. Granted, are they like crazy, insane indie formula duochromes? No, but I think that they're super wearable for the Natasha Denona customer. I really liked all of the looks that I created with this. And I know that after watching my review, a lot of you told me you wanna pick up this palette, but a lot of you also told me that you felt like this was maybe a little too redundant. So if you guys are thinking about getting this, I do have a lot of comparisons in that review, comparing it up against Pat McGrath, Anastasia Beverly Hills, a lot of other palettes that you probably have in your collections if you're a big like Natasha Denona and Luxury Eyeshadow fan. So definitely check that out but personally for me this was a very welcomed addition to my collection given that a lot of the other Natasha Denona midi palettes they're either like very warm like the bronze palette or they're much more cooler leaning like the glam palette and like the retro and I really wanted something that was just a mixture of like neutral to warm neutral shades. A very special palette that I need to get on your radar is this one from Guerlain. This is their holiday palette, which is called Golden Stars. I was lucky enough to pick this up in their holiday preview, which was kind of like a pre-sale. I don't know, I got an email about it. I'm pretty sure it was open to everybody and they had just a couple of items from their holiday collection available for purchase. I've been looking at the Guerlain website every single day to see when their holiday products are going to launch. So if you guys are interested in those types of drops. If you're waiting for these holiday launches to launch just like me, you definitely need to follow me on Instagram. I will put my handle up here if you don't follow me already. That's where I tell you guys when things are available, when they come back in stock, when things go on sale, any kinds of sales or deals I will share with you on my Instagram. So definitely head on over there. If you just wanna chat with me, ask me questions, follow-ups, anything like that, follow me and connect with me on Instagram. But putting that aside, guys, this palette's gonna be launched very soon on the Guerlain website. This collection actually just launched today when I was editing this video, so you can find everything on the Girl Lab website. I will link it down below. I don't know if it's going to be available at other retailers. I'm pretty sure, like, it probably won't be available at Sephora. I'm not positive. I feel like it's more likely to be available at, you know, Saks and Selfridges, more like those department stores. I will keep you posted. Man, I love this palette. This is actually my favorite Girl Lab quad that I have tried thus far. I have a couple others from their permanent collection and I do I like all of them I'm really into these new quads that they've released this year but this one is definitely my favorite so far I love how this is colorful but it's not too crazy you can get a lot of really beautiful quick one and done looks or just two color looks I think that all of these pair together really well to the point where no matter which ones you layer on top of each other, it's not gonna look muddy. They're gonna complement each other no matter what. It's kind of a no brainer. Also, just kind of keep in mind, as I mentioned in that review, these shades are a little more sparkly than some of the ones in their other palettes, depending on the palette. Like
like this overall a little more sparkly than majestic rose for example because it's a holiday palette this is also limited edition so if you guys were interested in picking up a Guerlain quad they're expensive they're 90 dollars. so i know it's very much a considered purchase and a lot of you have been telling me you know i've been thinking about it i don't know which one to get pay attention to this one because it's not going to be around for a long time it's a limited edition if you like this color story you might want this to be the first one that you try or if you already have a couple i think this one is definitely unique enough that you can pick this one up too lastly i've also really been enjoying these two collections from wayne goss we have the amber collection and also the Smoky Quartz collection. I just posted a review of both of these collections up on my channel. If you guys haven't tried Wayne Goss and you're sort of interested in an overview about the formula or you were interested in either of these, maybe you have some of his palettes already and you're like trying to figure out which one to buy or if it's worth your money, I recommend checking out that video. I have a lot of comparisons, overview of the formula. I think that these are so pretty. I mentioned in that review that a lot of times when I open up these Wayne Goss palettes, they don't look super exciting. And then when I go in with these on the eye, as I have the most delightful experience. The formula is really smooth. It's not super metallic. You're not going to get really high shine foily types of looks from these like you do from this Pat McGrath look for example, but you are going to get like really sophisticated everyday type of looks. You can deepen things up, smoke things up with the darker colors that are in this palette. I think that these make fantastic gifts. Between the two, I can't really decide which one I like more. You guys know I love warm tones, but I've been reading the comments on that video and all of you have been raving about the look that I did with Smoky Quartz. It seems like a lot of you like this one on me best. I don't know. I think that these are just so beautiful because I did my review kind of late from YouTube standards. I had a lot of time to use both of those palettes and kind of get a feel for them. Because I've used them so much, I can say with utmost confidence that I really like them. They definitely are some favorites for the month of September. All right, friends, that concludes the beauty section of this favorites video. Now I have a couple, just a couple of fashion and lifestyle favorites that I want to share with you all. The first one is this beautiful sweater. I'll show you guys right here. This is a gorgeous menswear collection sweater from Louis Vuitton. I'll move over so I can insert some photos of me styling this. If you haven't been watching my luxury haul and fashion videos, you definitely should. This is one of the items that I picked up on my recent vacation to Paris this past summer. Obviously, I could not wear this sweater until now because it has been very, very hot. But ever since it got a little bit chillier, this is the perfect thing to throw on. And then I don't need any other jacket or coat. You can also kind of layer it up with maybe a little crop top or something underneath. You can layer a beautiful white collared shirt underneath to make it a little more preppy and professional. It's just so like yummy and delicious and warm. It is a menswear sweater, but it's the same cut and fit as a lot of other sweaters that I have in my collection. I think it's very much unisex. I love the beautiful like fun neon colors and I have this in a size extra small so as long as you get a smaller size it's supposed to be oversized anyway I think you will be good if you guys don't want to pay the very high price for this sweater because I know it's from Louis Vuitton I know it's very expensive it is a luxury item I do want to point out another alternative that I own from Acme Studios I'll put in an image right here I have two of these beautiful sweaters that I have from last year I actually wore them in a lot of my videos this past winter and I noticed that Acme Studios launched this sweater again for the fall and winter season and they have new equally as beautiful colors so I will link this down below. It's still a pretty pricey sweater but it's very good quality. It's a really good investment so I just wanted to mention that as well. That's also a really nice alternative. Same silhouette, same kind of fit and materials. As far as handbags go, I have transitioned very much into my fall style handbags. Here I was using my white handbags in the beginning of the month and now I've like fully moved over to like black and brown handbags. So the one that I've been using and loving lately is this one from Louis Vuitton. This is the Louis Vuitton Vanity PM. I believe it's the Vanity PM. It's the smaller one. And this is the one that comes in the beautiful two-tone canvas. I love how you have the classic canvas right here. And then up here, you have the reverse monogram. I think at the time of me purchasing this, I didn't have a single item that came in this reverse monogram. So I kind of wanted to like get something a little different. I do have quite a few Louis Vuitton bags in my collection. By the way, 
comment down below let me know do you guys want to see like bag collection videos maybe a louis vuitton collection or like dior and chanel collection anything like that i'd be happy to make that kind of stuff i know that i mostly cover makeup on my channel but you guys know i also love bags as well one of the things that i really like about this bag other than just kind of that two-tone nature is that the leather is a very sturdy coated leather just like what you would see from the menswear line a lot of times with louis vuitton bags if you buy the traditional monogram canvas you get that like italian vaquetta style of leather which is very much prone to like water stains and that kind of stuff so as we get into the colder weather here in new england i try to be a little bit more careful about those bags i will check to see if it's going to rain this one is very carefree like you can this can go anywhere, all right? It's got two little feet on the bottom. It has a nice sturdy handle. Nothing here is going to get ruined if there's a little sprinkle outside. I do have it decorated with this teeny little scarf. The scarf does not come with it. And also it comes with this gorgeous chain strap. Like this is, it's so weighty and beautiful. I really do like this bag, highly recommend it. If you guys have any questions about this, if you're thinking of getting this, comment down below, ask away about it, or you can also DM me on Instagram, but I very much do love this bag, very excited to use it again. Accessory wise, I have very much been loving these oldie but goodie Prada sunglasses. I think these are called the Prada Cinema sunglasses. I bought these years ago probably from like Nordstrom Rack I, I did not pay full price for these I probably got them for maybe like 150 or 200 dollars something like that they are a bit extra I'll put an image of me styling these up here so you can kind of see what they look like but I think that these are just so fun to pair with like chic more simple types of fall looks I think in the summer with my sunglasses sometimes I go a little bit more simple because my looks are a bit more colorful and out there but I don't know I've just been reaching for these there was a really long time when I didn't wear these because I felt a little self-conscious because I thought that they were maybe a bit too extra I got a couple comments from the guys at work like when I was younger two jobs ago in my earlier 20s and so I put these away and I hadn't worn them in a really long time so I grabbed these started wearing them with all of my fall looks this month and I've really been liking them finally I have a couple of lifestyle favorites i promise you guys none of this is sponsored these are just things that i discovered on my own that i really love the first thing which a bunch of you have told me you've tried this before this is called athletic greens and basically what this is is like a powder that you scoop into water and drink every morning basically as like your daily vitamins and one little scoop is supposed to represent like all of the vegetables that you essentially are supposed to get during the course of the day so if you're somebody that you're always trying really hard to get your vitamins and nutrients in maybe you're buying a ton of vitamins and you're kind of you know taking those every single morning or you're trying to eat more vegetables this is supposed to sort of help you get those vitamins and so I don't know I just started taking this my personal trainer recommended this to me he said that he takes this all the time and I've really been enjoying it every single morning I wake up and after I've had my coffee I basically just take a little scoop of this I'm not gonna open it up because it kind of it'll make a mess and it's just gonna like get all over my sweater but it's basically just a green powder I mix it up with a little bit of water and ice I drink that and I I don't know if it's placebo effect, but I feel so much more energized in the morning after I have this. It's very refreshing. A lot of you told me you don't like this because you hate the taste. And my take on that is that it doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't, it also doesn't taste amazing. It just kind of tastes like spinach. And so here's what I do. I have a tip for you all. I think I might've talked about this in my August favorites. I can't remember. You all know I love liquid IV. All right, I'll put a coupon for this down below. I think I have a coupon for this still. What I do is I take half a packet of the liquid IV. I mix it in with the athletic greens and it's so good it's so delicious it tastes just like green juice that you would get from like a juice bar you know maybe one that actually has an apple in it so it has a little bit of sugar these are sugary like it's sugar so i'm just putting that out there these are very sweet so yeah i'll just mix the two oh my goodness it is a match made in heaven i love it it's so refreshing every morning it gives me energy and then what i do is i take the other half of the liquid iv and i put it in my new tumbler i don't know what you would call this it's kind of a it's like a water an insulated 
drink jug. I will try to find this on the internet. We just found this at our local grocery store. It just says Reduce. I think the brand is called Reduce. This has been a huge favorite of mine because I am too lazy in between my Zoom meetings to get up and get myself water. That's kind of why I drink the liquid IV. I told, I told you guys in the past, I drink the liquid IV not only because it's tasty, but because I just forget to hydrate myself. And so I like need something to remind me and motivation. So I'll take the other half of the packet. I'll put it in here with a bunch of water and ice and then as I'm filming as I'm working I just carry this around with me all day and it's just so refreshing so I've really been liking this as well so I was getting ready to film another video and I completely forgot I wanted to talk about these Chloe rain boots I bought these last season and I've got to tell you these are probably one of the most worn pair of shoes in my entire wardrobe and I wanted to tell you guys because they are back this season in a couple of different colors including these which are the black and I just want to let you know before they sell out. These are the perfect fall shoe for any time, any kind of weather, whatever you're doing. If you live in the suburbs, if you live in the city, these are so incredibly practical and please don't get deterred by the fact that these are rain boots because I don't know what it is about these but they're so comfortable. They are made of that sort of like traditional PVC material, but they have like the chicest silhouette. That's kind of what stopped me dead in my tracks when I was shopping for boots last year. I saw the silhouette and I just had to give these a try. These are so incredibly comfortable. I feel like most rain boots are not that comfortable and I feel like I'm clunking around and then after like a couple of hours or so, my feet just get kind of sore, they get tired. I don't know, they're a bit cumbersome. I can't stop wearing these. Like these are my go-to, throw it on with any kind of trousers, instantly look chic, but no matter what the weather, it's going to look so perfect. My favorite way to style these up is with wide leg trousers, but you could wear these with like a sweater dress, something like that. Especially if you live in an urban area where you walk around outside a lot, these are gonna be great. And I feel like with something like this, you need to get them now in September before they sell out. Anyway, friends, those are all my favorites for the month of September. Comment down below and let me know what you thought of all of my picks. Also, let me know what have been the items that you have been enjoying this month. I would love to hear about that. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Also, if you are new here, consider subscribing to my channel. If you are not sure, head on over to my channel page and you can see some of the other videos that I've made recently, some of the other brands that I like to review. And with that, I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.